Peace and greetings to our viewers at home. Welcome again to our Great Controversy series, the last chapter, chapter 42, the controversy ended. We started the controversy together. We are ending it here together. Amen. Uh, with me here today is Brother Matonzela, Brother Francois, Brother Mushle, Sister Zugiswa, I'm Sister Mube, your host, shall we bow our heads in prayer? Sister Zugiswa will pray for us. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father God, we thank you so much for the word that you've given us, the time that you've given us to discuss it. We thank you, Lord, because we understand that the controversy does come to an end. And we're so grateful to hear that, Lord, that we will not be going through these things for eternity, but you will show yourself victorious, Lord, in the persons of your saints, but also in the persons of the great controversy, being you at the center. At the center. Father God, we pray that as we have this discussion, we may be able to hear the Holy Spirit as he speaks to us, even the viewers at home. May we all be joyous, Father God, at these news and hear you as you speak. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 The judgment has been done. Now it's time for the Holy City to come down so the controversy mm. is ended. Our opening paragraph says, at the close of the thousand years, yes, ma Christ again returns to the earth. He is accompanied by the host of the redeemed mm. and attended by a retinue of angels. Mm. As he descends in terrific majesty, he bids the wicked dead arise to receive their doom. Mm. They come forth a mighty host, numberless as the sins of the sea. That made my heart hurt. Mm. Yeah. What a contrast to those who were raised at the first resurrection. Mm. The righteous were clothed with immortal clothed with immortal, immortal youth and beauty. Mm. The wicked bear the traces of disease and death. Yeah. Mm. Every eye in the vast multitude mm. is turned to behold the glory of the Son of God. With one voice, the wicked was exclaimed, mm. mm. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Mm. Now look mm. at this. Mm. Even the wicked, the wicked. looking God, Jesus, <laughs> coming down in his majesty, yeah. in his glory, mm. even their tongue, cannot hey. be tied. They hey. explain, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mm. Amen. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's very beautiful to see because as, as, uh, as you have actually said, controversy will have to end. And the chapter itself speaks of that moment when you go to the book of Naum, the Bible speaks about this affliction shall not mm. continue for Of course. Mm. So in the midst of it all, as we are actually facing whatever that we are facing, we have to have this in mind. You know, one day it will come to an end. Now, when you come to the book of Zechariah, Zechariah speaks about where exactly will the temple of the Lord, when they come here down, is going to be set. Of course. Mm. You know, so it's beautiful to know because there are also misconceptions where people are actually misapplying these verses because it's connecting to the Lord. They say that, no, God is still going to establish his kingdom in Israel. And that mm. kingdom is going to be a physical kingdom, and it's only the Jews are going to be part of that kingdom. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Zechariah chapter 14, verse 3 to 4. Okay. The Bible says, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Mm. Verse 4, And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, mm. which is before Jerusalem on the east. Mm -hmm. And the Mount of Olives shall, leave, I mean, shall cleave in the midst of thereof uh, uh, toward the east and toward the west and there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall, uh, shall, shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south so this is the scenario getting there so Christ comes down and then he actually comes where he actually ascended mm. Mm. <laughs> so he was on the Mount of Olives when he went back he doesn't forget a place so when he's going to come back he wanted the temple of the Lord to come on that particular place there. So he comes on the top of the mountain and then it will open a valley mm -hmm. whereby now the seat of God will descend so that when, where we actually being introduced is Christ descending on the mount, I mean the temple of God coming down on the Mount of Olives. Mm -hmm. Now I think the latter part of the statement that you opened with, um, the one that talks about the contrast between those who are righteous and the physical state of the wicked. I think, mm -hmm. I think that one is what breaks my heart because mm -hmm. number one, there are as many as the sea sands in the seashore. Mm. You know, and when you contrast that with the saved, mm. it kind of breaks your heart that so many people, mm. so many people would have rejected the love of God mm. to an extent. And in the previous chapters, literally Ellen White, the author said, 
talking about the righteous living mm. in their resurrection, in their resurrection. And she says that we will come out the way we were, mm. but in immortal youth. Yeah. Mm. And when Adam will look at us in contrast to his perfection, he will mourn over mm. the effects of sin. Mm. But now here at the, at the wicked, mm. when you died without a leg, <laughs> mm. you will rise without a leg. Mm. If you died without an eye, yeah. And you were punny and you know you died from HIV or whatever, you will wake up in that weak and punny state, that pathetic state that you died in. And there's no regeneration. There's no transformation of the body at the twinkling of an eye. I mean you just look at that, it's 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 a continued state of suffering. It's sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The end of controversy. I just want to share with you what is the end, why things start, why things begin. Mm. Because we must know that things do end. Yeah. Mm. And the devil has deceived people not to believe that things will end. Mm. Mm. People, mm. they think things will remain as they are. Mm. Yeah. But when you read, for instance, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, mm -hmm. to everything there is a season mm. oh, yeah. for mm. every matter or purpose under heaven. Mm -hmm. He says in chapter 7, verse 8, the end of a, of a thing is better than its beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, as we finish the chapter, there are a lot of things that you, you start to see that <coughs> when things are going to an end, yeah. Christ, Revelation chapter 21, yes, sir. verse 5 says, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, mm -hmm. I make all things mm -hmm. new. Mm -hmm. He says, and he said to me, Write for these words are true and faithful. Verse 6 says, and he said to me, It is done. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I am the Alpha mm -hmm. and the Omega, yes, sir. the beginning yeah. and, and the, the end. end. Yeah. So everything will come to an end. Oh, yeah. hey. Of course. Hey. And I think just following from that is the fact that you know, when we think of the end, we always think the end is in heaven. Mm. But actually, we come back to earth. earth. You know, yeah. we're coming back to earth. I mean, Revelation 21 verse 1 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For oh, the yes. first heaven and the first earth mm. were passed away, and mm. there was no more sea. Mm. And verse 2 tells us about the new Jerusalem coming down. Yeah. So we see that the end for the saints is actually here on earth. Mm. God gives us a new earth, earth. for us to live in. You yes. know? So as much as we want to live in heaven, heaven is only for a thousand years, mm. you know. So we need to enjoy the earth that we have now, knowing that God is going to renew this earth and we're going to come back again. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. only those that have lived fully on earth that will come back to earth. And this is what we see here, that we are coming back. We are not staying in heaven. A thousand years, we are coming back. <laughs> but obviously it's going to be a new earth. Yeah. Yeah. And, and actually the Bible says, God is going to restore to us yes. everything, oh, yes. everything mm. that sin is taken mm. away. Mm. So we need our earth mm. made new, mm. beautiful, mm. so that we can start enjoying yeah. Yeah. what yeah. sin is taken yeah. away from us. Yeah. Yeah. Now look at this. You know, I was so um, puzzled <laughs> by what we are about to discuss right mm. now. Mm. Now the devil stays a thousand years alone oh, in yes. the bottomless pit. Yeah. Oh, the, the dead arise. Look at what the devil does mm. when the holy mm. city is approaching. Mm. He's certainly excited. Mm. Some mm. people that can be deceived yes. yeah. have been resurrected. There he starts with his deception. Mm. <laughs> Actually, yeah. he now tells them, yeah. he is gathering the army as the great general. Sure. Hey. He tells them, the city of God is coming. We can overthrow it. Hey. Mm. Yet another deception. <laughs> Listen to, to the writer. The writer she says, in that vast throng are multitudes of the long-lived race that existed before the fly. Mm. Yeah. Men of lofty stature and giant intellects yeah. we yielded to the control of fallen angels. Good people. Mm. Now this writer is saying, amongst those that shall be in the second resurrection mm. are men of skin, oh, yes. mm. of hey. intelligence, mm. hey. high IQ. Mm. Mm. Some of them are the inventors. Your chose of Stalin. You know? <laughs> some of them even made no. some of these weapons of army that we are using right, right. now. Mm. And then when the devil tells them we are preparing for army, they suddenly get excited. Yeah. Mm. So they know how to do best. Mm. And there they are. The devil deceives them again. What a sad story. Hey. Yeah. Hey. It's, it's, it's very sad, you know, because it, there, there was a person who once asked me, what about if God gives them a second probation? What, mm. what, will, what, will, what will happen to them? Mm. 
Because these individuals, they've gone through the experience of the seven last plagues, isn't it? Mm. It was not an easy one. Mm. But now with the pain of the seven last plagues, now we are at the end of the thousand years. Do you think or do you suppose if they are to be given an opportunity, are they going to change from their mindset? Mm. No. Now the writer says that a second probation mm-hmm. weren't given them would be, I mean, I wouldn't give in them, would be occupied as was the first in every, yeah, in everything, the, the requirements of God, mm-hmm. an exciting rebellion against him. So even if God would have decided to give them a second probation where mm-hmm. they are right mm-hmm. now, it, it was going to be so in, difficult for them to be able to learn righteousness. And Isaiah chapter 26, it says there, verse, verse 10, let favor be showed uh, to the wicked, yet... It says they will, 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 will not, I mean, he will not be able to learn righteousness. So even if another favor could have been shown them, these individuals, they've made up their mind. I wonder why when they come out of their grave, they pick up from they've left off. Of course. Mm. So we spoke about a close of probation. It's very key when it's close. No matter what God can do for you, there's nothing that it, it can be done in terms of changing up your mind because you are now becoming satanic in nature. Mm. And the devil, just look at that. The devil... He doesn't change his mind. Now he's seeing the city of God has come down. What is he saying? Now there's an opportunity. Let's go and overthrow it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in, ef- in essence, what would be happening is that the wicked, they are actually like Satan. Because think about mm. it. Mm. Yeah. For a thousand years, Satan has been on earth. Sure. It's a time that he was supposed to think about everything that he has done in mm. his whole years that mm. he's been on earth, tempting yeah. people, you know, accidents, everything that Satan has been doing on earth. Mm. But instead of having that time of reflection and possibly repenting, <laughs> he doesn't do that. Instead, when the wicked come back, yep. he still wants, you know, yeah. to, to, to start the controversy again. And so you see that even the wicked, they, even if they were to be given time, because mm. they, are, they are now, it's almost like they are like Fish. Satan now. Sure. You mm. know, they, they think like him because mm. when he then suggests that let's attack the city, I mean, they are looking at this dazzling new Jerusalem (laughs) and they think that they can overtake the city. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. (laughs) Think about it. They were there when Christ was resurrecting. They could see the glory. Some of them were actually destroyed by the glory of Christ. Mm. But here they think they can destroy the city and Mm. Christ in it. You you can see the deception that it runs so deep that even at the very end, these people are still deceived and... We cannot expect God to take these people into heaven. In oh, this yes. mm. We no. can't. Mm. I mean, heaven would be... A place of suffering. Else. Yes, we would be... You know, one day we wake up and the controversy has started all over again. Of course. And God cannot risk it. Sure. He cannot. Not only risking, is doing them a favor by that's making true. sure they are not there. Mm. Hey. Mm. And you know, another thing that's also interesting here is the number of people that are involved. Mm. Because when you look at Revelation chapter 20, I think it's verse 8, it says, And shall go out to deceive nations, mm. nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to gather them together for battle, the number of whom is the sand of the seashore. Mm. So you look at that and you think Satan is a spiritual intelligent entity. Oh. Mm. And he will appeal to human intelligence mm. and try to use the might of the human race mm. from Cain down to the last rebellious spirit, human spirit, mm. to try and galvanize human might and power against mm. the government of God. Mm. But the good, well, the bad news rather, because the text continues to say that they go and encompass the holy city and fire comes down. And, mm. you know, when you look at the number of people, the image of God in ruin. Sure. It's terrifying. Yes, yeah. Satan, one will say, once a rebel, always a rebel. Mm. Mm. When you have read the statement that says, every eye in that vast multitude is turned to behold the glory of the Son of God with one voice, mm. the wicked host exclaimed, mm. blessed art is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Listen to this. Mm. It is not love to Jesus Ish. that inspires this utterance. Mm. Mm. Sure. The force of truth mm. wages the weights from unwilling lips. Mm. They start another deception. Mm. Things are, co- are continuing. As the wicked went into their graves, so they come forth with the same enmity to Christ and the same spirit of rebellion. Oh. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and Satan has power also to, insp- to, give, to give to his people. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen here. It says the presence of Christ having been removed. Satan works wonders to support his claims. He makes the weak strong and inspires all with his own spirit and energy. Mm. So the devil has power to inspire and vitalize, give people his spirit and energy, give them supernatural power, spiritualism. Not only that, 
Hmm. He says to them after that, hmm. look, I have resurrected you hey. from your graves. <laughs> now arise, then let's start the war. Yeah. Now, the writer draws a very interesting <laughs> scenario here. He says, finally, mm-hmm. the devil gives the command, let's attack. Hey. When the devil says that, Christ says, Close the gates of the city. It's hey. a command hey. that the gates of the city be closed. Be closed. We are inside. Hey. The gates of the city are being closed. Oh, yes. And then at that mm. moment, the writer says, Christ is elevated. Mm. Hey. Inside the city is elevated so high hey. so that both the wicked <laughs> and the righteous, and the righteous hey, no, are able to see him. Mm. They are drawn to the sin that is happening inside the mm. city. Next to Christ, he says, those that shall be next to Christ are those that are like prints that were plucked out of the fire. Hey. And he describes those as people who once worked for the kingdom of the devil, devil. Mm. earnestly mm. Mm. and were mm. tend to follow Christ. Mm. So those shall be like mm. those that were plucked out of the fire. Mm. She draws the same hey. Next comes the martyrs. Hey. The and then eventually comes all of us. Mm. Hey. Hey. It, it's very beautiful to see that there's no any amount of sin that one can commit. Mm. That if they come to their senses through the administration of the Holy Spirit, they won't be able to come back. Yes. Of course. Imagine these were the worst enemies of the gospel. Of course. But they, somewhere, somehow, through the preaching of the gospel, God was able to arrest their attention and they turned to God. Of course. So anyone, whether you're a leader or you're a president or whatever, you have not gone too far unless you have crossed the line of grace. Mm. But if the grace of God and the conscience is still working on you, you still remember that, look, this is not it. God can, can see rich you wherever you are. Yeah. So mm. close to very Christ is the enemies of the gospel. These are the ones who probably mm. have burned the Bibles. Mm. These are mm. the ones who have stood up of and course. persecuted like Paul. Mm. The yeah. church, you know, shut down during the lockdown with coronavirus going on. The church are shut down. There's someone who's giving a command somewhere. Yeah. So whatever they are, they will have to understand that the great controversy will end. And one day everyone will have to stand. But they can still make a choice. If they've been following in the wrong path, they can still actually, through the preaching of the gospel, give themselves to Christ. He's mm. more than willing to take anyone and everyone, provided if they are willing to be saved by the grace of God. And you know, all that I just see in that is the power of the gospel. Yeah. Because it says, nearest the throne are those who, who were once zealous in the cause of Satan. Mm. So these are not just people who've been saved, but they were zealous. Mm. And I remember, we, we, we hear so many stories of people who will tell you that I was doing Satanism. Yeah. I met the Lord in the spiritual realm. Of course going to bewitch somebody in the spiritual realm and when I met salvation and you think wow and God was able to deliver people who were deep in sin those who were zealous agents of evil of Satan and they, they will find a seat in the kingdom and not only that it does not talk about the matters Mm. It does not talk about the most pious, oh, yes. but it says closest to the throne mm. are those who were most zealous mm. in the cause of Thank Satan. You. Power of grace. Yeah, it actually reminds me of the fact that, you know, as planet Earth, because we have sinned, you know, we are told that hey. we, would, we wouldn't be as close. To, you know, the angels are not as close to Christ as we, we who were. have hey. been redeemed on Earth yeah. are hey. close to Christ. Why? Mm. Because we've had an experience of Earth. We've, we've toiled. We've, we've gone through the most. Sure. And we are able to experience salvation to its fullest extent, whereas the angels who have never sinned, you know, the Bible tells us that the angels long to look into mm. these things. They, mm. they are yearning to understand yeah. this grace, this salvation. So Amen. it's exactly the same that mm. those who have actually been more, you know, like they, they were at the worst, they were at the end of the road, Aye. that they are the closest to the throne. Why? Because the message of the Bible is a message of grace and mm. salvation. And mm. God brings the hey. furthest to the closest. So, oh. hey. as you yeah. sit at home, <laughs> as far as you are, God is saying, you can be close to me right now. Of course. No matter what you've done. In oh, fact, yes. if you've not done anything, then we are, you know, it's sad for you because you cannot get close to God. Yeah. So, we must be happy that we've done things because why? We can get close to God as much as possible mm. because we experience that redeeming grace that God can give us. Mm. Mm. Amen. Grace, grace. grace. Yes, yes, we mm. God and their grace. Grace. How important it is as we read the book, it teaches us that as we speak now, probation is open, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And time is ticking. Mm-hmm. Probation is to close. Mm-hmm. Now, when you read, it says here, no new probation in which to remedy the defects of their past lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There will be no 
other probation. Mm. It, it's like a lifetime of transgression. Those yeah. people we have lived that life yeah. and mm. it's done. Established. Mm. Yeah. We thank you so much, our viewers. We shall be taking a short, a short break. Remember, we are in the holy city. Now we are seeing the redeemed mm. carrying their harps, crowned, singing the song of victory. Please meet us after the break. Welcome again, viewers. We are now in the Holy City. We are looking at the rewards of faithfulness. Now, we are drawn to a scenario where Jesus is being coronated. You know, the writer of this book has taken time to, to, to describe. She has a good flair of yeah. Descri yeah. description. She, yeah. she would tell you what happens in heaven. Some of these things she can't comprehend. She would say, I saw grass that was crying holy when it sways this way. She tries to explain. Uh, grass. But when it comes to the coronation of Christ here, she says, it cannot be penned. Hey. When she wrote that, I hey, was, my so. thoughts were immediately taken hey. to the father of Christ who happens to be David mm. hey. during his day of coronation. Yeah. When yeah. you look at the coronation of David, it was hey. as if heaven was displaying its ability to work events. Hey. Because it says all tribes of Israel that they came out with their swords shining, hey. with their shields shining. Hmm. Actually, she says no coronation has been so great like the coronation of David since the history of this world. Meaning, all the coronations we see today can never be like the coronation of, of David. David. Now, when it comes to the son of David, <laughs> Sister Wai says it cannot be penned. Mm. Courtesy to those who will be watching it. Yeah. Hey, so I look forward to hey. watch the coronation. Now, she goes further to say, now books were opened. Sure. Mm. And now books are not opened merely for judgment, but for the wicked outside the city sure. to see for themselves hey. what they have done. Sure. We have judged them. Mm. Yeah. We are given an opportunity now to judge themselves. Yeah. Mm. Our mind is so powerful mm. that it, we, God is able to, to bring it to our consciousness, whatever that we've done. Mm. So we don't have to, un, you know, just to, to look down upon the mind that we have. It has a capability and ability to be able to store all the information, all mm. the actions and spoken mm. words and everything that we have done in yeah. life. It's kept there. Mm. And we are told that when, when books are going to be open, uh, I love that one, when books are going to be open, each one of them will be able to, God is going to make sure that each one is since is going to be displayed before them. Mm. You know, that paragraph there, I think, six, six, uh, triple six, uh, paragraph two, it says, as soon as the books of record are open mm -hmm. yeah. and the eye of Jesus looks upon the wicked, mm -hmm. they are conscious of every sin which they have ever committed. committed. Yes. They see just where they are what? They are fit. Mm -hmm. From the mm. path of purity and holiness, just how far pride and rebellion mm. have carried them in uh, uh, violation of the law of God. So we don't have to fool ourselves. No wonder why, you know, we see we're doing things in darkness and we think that, no, uh, no one saw me, you know. Mm -hmm. But we also told when Christ is going to look at this, this, this individuals, when the books are open, we are told that every sin that they have committed, I think that, that's one is coming from Petrarch's and Prophet, mm -hmm. you know, it says it's going to come so vividly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that which was done in secret will be made plain to everyone. Hey. So we don't have to... To, you know, to fool ourselves. The mm. time is coming. Mm. Whatsoever that we are doing, mm. if we don't repent and confess and mm. turn away from that, one day our children, our wives, our, our family members who have never been there when we are doing things in secret, mm. they will be able to see our sins as well mm. and be able to see exactly how life has been mm. because God is going to make it plain and clear. So in essence, what Brother Francis is saying, sorry, you reminded me of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14, and sure. it says, for God shall bring every work into judgment Boy. with mm. every secret thing, mm. whether it be good or whether it be evil. evil. You know, yeah. sometimes sometimes we think that the secret things, you know, it's just my secret or mm. it's a secret between the two of us. Mm. Yeah. But God is watching in heaven and those mm. secrets will one day be revealed. Boy. So in essence, there's nothing like a secret, mm. yeah. you know, because everything will be brought into judgment. Every single work that we have done Boy. will be brought into judgment. Yes. Mm. And God is so fair such that 
it's not only the writers which judge the 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 wicked, mm. but the wicked themselves get to see why they have they are receiving the punishment yeah. that they are yeah. receiving, mm-hmm. which shows that God is fair. Because of you know, it's it's not like you've done something Ash. wrong and you don't know what you've done, and now you're suffering. You're like, but why? What did I do? What did I do? You know. But it's the fact that God shows you everything that you have done, mm. even the things you didn't think God sees. He shows mm. you that this is why you are receiving the punishment you are oh, receiving. Yeah. And, and, and we can only say just and true are your ways. Because yeah. why? We see that the things that we have done, they warrant the results that we are going to get. Or that the week... Why do I keep saying we? I'm not going to be part of that group. <laughs> of course. In the name of Jesus, <laughs> yes, we please. find that. <laughs> yes, the wicked, the wicked will see what they have done and yes. why they are receiving the punishment. Mm. Because God is that good. He does not hide from you why you are receiving the punishment. Mm. But he shows you that this is what you have done and this is the reason why you need to be destroyed. Thank you so much, my sister, Brother Mutle. The author on that note says, as soon as the book's of record are opened. Mm-hmm. The eye of Jesus looks upon the wicked. They are conscious of every sin which they have ever committed. They see just where their feet diverged from the path of purity and holiness. Mm-hmm. Now here I'm seeing another group here of the wicked. These are people whose feet diverged from the path of holiness. Mm-hmm. So this is telling me that these are those who are in the truth, hey. but they left the truth hey. and they'll be counted among the wicked. Hey. <laughs> so much, so much. Danger. Now, now let's look at this. Now, above the throne, Mm. in the holy city, the cross is revealed. There we go. When the cross is revealed, the writer says, we will see a panoramic view appear Mm. from the sins of Adam's first temptation and fall, Mm. the successive steps in the great plan of salvation, Mm. the Savior's birth, the temptation by the devil, the sins of Calvary, the crucifixion. We see the pleading that Jesus has been doing Mm. over the years. We see Gethsemane, we see the horror. Mm. We see God's children being prisoned. Mm. We see the disciples over the years. We even see Pilate. Mm. We even see Herod. We even see the high priest who was there on the day before crucifixion. That will be shown to us. Now what really really hit Mm. my heart was a statement that I'm, I'm going to read next. It says, there is Nero, that monster mm. of cruelty and vice, mm. beholding the joy and exaltation Oy. of those whom he once tortured, mm. and in whose extreme anguish he found satanic delight. Ay. His mother is there Ay. to mm. witness the result of her own work. Ay. Mm. Nero's mother. How the mm. evil stamp of character transmitted Ay. to her son Ay. the passions encouraged and yes. developed by her influence. Yes. Mm. Now, good people, hey. Hey. not only Nero's do we see Nero, the one who took Christians and put tar on them and lit them oh, yeah. and mm. made them torch in his garden, hey. not only do we see Nero, we see the mother. Hey. This speaks to every parent hey. out there. Yes. What is it that we have been embedded in the consciences mm. of our children? Mm. How have we influenced mm. them? We don't want something mm. to be part of the group. Sure. Because look here. If my children are not going, I'm not going either. Mm. They were given to me as empty discs. Yeah. Hey. What they have become mm. is what I wrote yeah. hey. in those discs. Hey. So if they are not going, I'm not going either. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. who unto parents? Mm. Yeah. Who will not look at this duty faith? Oh, yes, yes. Mm. By the way, a woman, I just want to prof- put in prophecy context. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Why not the father, a man? Mm. Why, why, why the woman? Mm-hmm. Now, a woman in Bible prophecy is a symbol of what? Church. A church. church. Mm-hmm. Can we go to an extent of saying, the, I mean, Nero's mother represents the false churches mm-hmm. who have so much influence upon their members, mm-hmm. but yet through their influences, they are developing people who are becoming enemies of God. Mm-hmm. So we cannot just leave that story there because there are so many churches and so many leaders within those churches who yeah. are actually strengthening the hands of the evildoers rather mm-hmm. than showing them the way to righteousness and how they can live right for God. What they are doing is, is just to influence them to become the enemies of the gospel of Christ. Mm-hmm. So this is a story that we need to take it to heart as a people of God, wherever, if we are leaders, we are pastors, bishops, mm-hmm. reverend, whatever mm-hmm. names, I could care less. Mm-hmm. Your, your church, if, if the church we are serving, 
You are not doing justice in terms of preparing a people that will have the fear of God, that will give glory to God. And because we are living in the, light, in the hour of the judgment of God, then you are going to end up also as a leader mm. in that particular church, like the mother of, 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 of Nero. Mm. Because everyone will have to give an account mm. at the end of the day. Mm. So we need to be very careful when God has given you an opportunity to be able to shepherd the people of God. Mm. Make sure that you become so faithful. Mm. Because this, this Nero became what he became simply because of the training which he got from his mother. Mm. And we are all being trained in the churches because the church has a certain work to accomplish for each and every member in as much as we are individuals. But the church has also uh, that influence upon the members. So if you are not faithful, you will end up to witness also what actually uh, your members are going to become in life because their judgment, not only they are going to be punished, but the judgment of those individuals will come upon you as well because you're actually unfaithful to God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I actually want to take it further and say that, you know, when we think about a mother, we also think about influence. Mm -hmm. So as much as we can talk about the mm -hmm. role of a mother, but we all are shedding an influence. True. You know, as you sit here, some yeah. people might not be parents, sure. but there's somebody in your life that you are influencing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. by the way that we speak, by the way that we dress, by the way that... We just live our lives. We are a living influence or a living sermon. Mm. So as much as we look at the pastors, but it, it's, it's time to introspect as well. Sure. Mm. You know, we mm. live with people. What yeah. kind of influence are we shedding on those people? Mm. Mm. Are we leading them to the cross? Are we leading them away from the cross? You know, yeah. we are Christians. We go yeah. to church, you know, every Sabbath. But the people that we live with, can they actually say that we are Christians? Mm. Because some of us, it's easy to be at church and to mm. speak a certain way, to do certain things. But how are the people that live with us being influenced by the things that we do mm. and mm. that we say? So, it, you know, it's in a broader context. Sometimes we want to always look at the church and we forget to mm. reflect upon ourselves. Because if you think about it, who is the church? Mm. It's mm. the members. Yeah. Mm. It's us that are the church. Of course. So if the church is leading people astray, it basically means that we as individuals are leading people astray. That's yeah. true. And we all know that if we ourselves were okay, if every single church member was fine, we wouldn't be having half of the issues we have in mm. the church. Mm. But it's because as individuals, we are not doing our part. That's why the church is in the state that we're in. The reason the pastors can even lie to us is because as individuals, we are not going back <laughs> mm, to the scriptures. Mm. Now, mm -hmm. as if that is not enough, mm. as the wicked are outside, mm. as they are reminded of their sins, mm. some of them are reminded of the time oh, yes. when yes. they imprisoned the children of God, hey, when now. they threw them in dungeons, hey. and they are reminded of the ways. Mm. Mm. Inasmuch as he have done it unto one of these, hey, of my brethren, you hey. have done it unto me. Hey. It says at that moment the wicked will be as if they are entranced. Hey. As if that is not enough, Christ hey. will yes, then sir. lift up the tablets of stone stones. As evidence hey. of what they have done, hmm. the character of God is lifted yet again yeah. as a witness yeah. to the wicked so they can see the wickedness that they have done. Mm. When that is happening to them, we mm. inside the city mm. have an opportunity mm. of throwing down our hey, and singing hey. worthy, worthy <laughs> is the Lamb. Mm. And you know, I think at that note, I mean, this, this scene where it starts with the cross of Christ lifted above the throne, yeah. mm -hmm. really shows us, because really Ellen White, what she's doing there, she's giving us a panoramic review of the okay. cosmic conflict yeah. from where it, be it began to its conclusion. But it starts with the cross yeah. mm -hmm. lifted above the crown, showing that everyone had an opportunity to be saved. Mm -hmm. Everyone had an opportunity to take a decision for eternal life. Sure. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, people took their stand in the cosmic conflict mm -hmm. and the wicked must die for their decisions. And Ellen White elsewhere also says that the wicked will also be reminded of opportunities where they could have learned more about the word of God. Mm -hmm. She literally says she will pass, God will pass by the Bible and show you that when you saw the Bible you could have had an opportunity to read it. Yeah. When you heard someone call the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit was calling you. And another, another preacher literally says that <laughs> it took a, a wicked man's, he makes an illustration and talks about a hard neck. Sure. That God was so bent on the salvation of souls. Mm -hmm. God pleaded with us from our birth to our death. And it took a stubborn neck for people to reject the salvation of God. Mm. And that's where they will see that truly God's judgment are worthy. Mm. Yes, it helps us now to, to understand this panoramic view. Mm. Yes. Because divine things need to be known spiritually. Mm. 
No one will understand these uh, paragraphs that we have read yeah. if you are not spiritual in these. This, this paranormal view will, will give you this. It says here, this awful spectacle appears just as it was. Mm. Satan, his angels, and his subjects have no power to turn from the picture of their own work. <laughs> mm. Each actor, like my sister has said, we are members, mm. and here it says each actor, mm -hmm. which means we are in this stage as well. Mm -hmm. Each actor recalls the part which he performed. Mm. Sure. Mm. Now, let us look at this. Um, the devil, mm. having seen all of this, and the wicked, having seen all of this. Yep. Remember, before we got into the city, they were planning mm. to come and attack the city. Yep. Now, at this very time, the devil says to them, after everybody has seen what they, they mm. are done, the devil being the devil that he is, mm. yes. he says to them, one more time, let's attack the city. Mm. But now the scenario becomes different. Oh, yeah. mm. People haven't yeah. seen what has been hidden. They pounce on the devil. Mm. And mm. then they fulfilled at the words of God when he said, mm. because thou hast set thy heart mm. as the heart of God, behold, sure. therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, mm -hmm. the terrible of the nations, sure. and they shall draw their swords against the, the beauty of thy wisdom, mm -hmm. and they shall defile thy brightness. Mm -hmm. They shall bring da thee down to the pit. I will destroy thee, O mm -hmm. covering cherub, hey. from the midst of the stones of yeah. fire. Yeah. I will cast thee to the ground. Mm -hmm. I will lay thee before kings, mm -hmm. that they may behold thee. Sure. I will bring thee Ay, to ashes. Mm. Upon the earth to behold this. Now these words are said at the beginning. Yeah. Mm. And God allows the devil to run his course mm. and finish. Mm. And right at the end, right at the end, mm. his words are fulfilled. He says, I will destroy thee, yeah. O covering cherub. Yeah. Yeah. Just hey, at that yeah. moment, hey. in that confusion, mm. hey. the fire reigns. Mm. Hey. The city is raised mm. to above, yep. above. The whole concept. Hey. It says, great shall be that day. Oh, it yes. shall burn like an oven. Mm. Even the rocks mm. will be turned into fire. Liquid. Everything will be so much fire. Just mm. when it, that all of that is happening, mm. the children of God, mm. the children of God, shall then enjoy sure. Sure. the fruits of obedience. Mm. Hey. Mm. You know, hey. what, what will happen to the devil is what will happen to the Antichrist. No wonder why we cannot disconnect the Antichrist from the devil. Mm. When you come to the book of Revelation, which speaks about a papacy, God says these kings, they've been, you know, the, the kings have been the army of the papacy as we are going toward the end of the world. Mm. They are going to be doing the agenda of the papacy. But I like Revelation chapter 17. It says there, and the ten horns which thou sowest upon the beast, these shall hate, I mean, shall hate the war and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and mm. burn her with fire for God. So God will be in charge now for God hath put in their, in their hearts to fulfill his will mm. and to agree. I mean, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until I mean, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So the devil has been using this great army, which is actually marshaled at the end of the thousand years. And now eventually now they come to realize that they've been deceived. They are now trying to punch on, onto the devil. Mm -hmm. So the beast also is going to, the same scenario is going to happen with the beast as well. Of mm -hmm. course, this will be before the thousand years or yeah, before the thousand years. And then the, the devil is going to be after the thousand years. So it doesn't help much, you know, to be able to work in the kingdom of the devil. If the papacy and the rest of his allies, they actually align themselves to want to be on this wrong side, they must know that no matter how much power and exercise or probably influence they have upon the kings of the earth, one day is one day, God is going to turn the table. And these same people that have been eating together will turn against them. Mm -hmm. So basically, my brothers and sisters and viewers at home, we yeah. are looking forward to that city. Oh, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. God promises, he says, I will stay with my people. I will be their God. Yeah. They shall be my people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I will yes. tabernacle with them. Amen. We will be able to see God face to face. Yeah. And we talk about stories of salvation. Mm -hmm. God, yeah. Not only that. Mm. This is a place where we will know eternity abounds. Oh, yes. Mm. Eternity knows no <laughs> counting. Mm. Yeah. We're talking forever and, and ever. Mm. So we look forward to that time. Mm. Now, viewers, mm. please don't go away. Stay with us. When we come back, we are concluding this with you. Stay with us. Amen. Welcome.
welcome once again our viewers. We are in the holy city. Now, finally, the wicked are destroyed. Mm. The controversy is over. Mm. Yeah. We are ushered into eternity. Oh, yeah. And then the writer says, and the years of eternity as they roll mm. Mm. will bring richer and still more glorious revelations of God and of Christ. Mm. As knowledge is progressive, mm. so will love, hey. reverence, mm. and happiness increase. Oh, yes. The more men learn of God, the greater will be their admiration of his character. Mm. As Jesus opens before them the riches of redemption mm. and the amazing achievements in the great controversy with certain mm. viewers, this concludes mm. lesson 42 of our great controversy. Yeah. At this time, we are taking this opportunity to walk with you throughout the whole series from the very first chapter to the end. So we are wrapping this up together. Now, in the wrapping up, we are going right back from the destruction of Jerusalem. Here is a, is a people love, mm. a country owned. Mm. He says, ye are separate. Yeah. Mm. Ye are of holy priesthood. Mm. Yeah. Now we look at the way the children of Israel rejected the truth. Mm. Like, and that until at the end of the time, yeah. God visits them with mm. judgment. On that day when the voice was heard crying Ichabod, mm. Mm. the glory of the Lord departed, departed, departed. from mm. the children of Israel mm. and judgments followed them. Yeah. When mm. they did, the writer says on that very day, blood flowed on the temple steps oh, yes. as water. Mm. Those were the judgments of God. The same visitation mm. is coming towards the end of time. The very same visitation. Now, I want us to look at what happens mm. after Jerusalem is destroyed. Mm. The destruction of Jerusalem speaks to the scattering of mm. the truth and mm. the erroneous doctrines that come in there after. Mm. Just slow, slightly after Jerusalem, I think because Jerusalem was burnt and destroyed in AD 70. And afterwards, the Christian church was persecuted throughout. And it was persecuted from the time of the book of Acts. Even when the book of Revelation was written, John was exiled to the island of Patmos because of the persecution. But shortly, the persecution started to end with the time of the Emperor Constantine. And in the year 5, I think it's between 512 and 513, Constantine took out an edict of Milan saying that they should stop persecuting the Christian church because Constantine had had a so-called vision where he, he saw a sign written in Tutunakia, meaning by this you shall conquer, and he saw the sign of the Christians. And that's when he converted nominally to Christianity. Mm -hmm. And it was during that time where he started moving towards making the Christian church the church of the state because he saw that Christianity was gaining strength and he was trying to put together the Roman Empire. So I think it was around the year, no, before that, we had a Sunday law. That was around the year 321 AD, where he literally took out a law saying that let the venerable day of the sun be observed. Mm. And this was for the Roman Empire and different people would serve their different gods on the venerable day of the sun, mm. which in Latin is called Dies Solis. Mm. And that is the history of Sunday itself. Mm. And as we go down the history of Christian time, the Christian church was made the state church of the universal, it was made the universal church of Rome, mm. the Roman Empire. And then Christians started to lower the standard of mm. righteousness because if mm. they wanted to have favor with Constantine and them. And remember that Rome, for starters, in Italy. That's where the headquarters of the Roman Empire was. And Christians in Rome, the Bishop of Rome got more influence than Bishop of the Christian Church in other parts of the Roman Empire. And that's from when we start seeing the developments of what we call the papacy. And from that time, Christianity took all the pagan rights into the church. And hence, we have so many unbiblical things today, which Brother Fansa will tell us more about. Mm. Yeah, when you come to Revelation chapter 6, it speaks about the, the pale horse. I mm. mean, we don't have time to mm. go into series, but the pale horse is actually a symbol of the, the, the Catholic Church. Now, there are things that are actually mentioned there in verse 6, chapter 6, verse 6, it says, and I, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, mm. and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou heard not the oil and the wine. So at this, at this moment, the word of God, of course, Bali, that's what you make bread from. Mm -hmm. And bread, spiritually speaking, is actually the word of the Lord. So at this moment, in the time of the Catholic Church, in as much as there were so many things that were coming in, but what we know, what was very key, is that the Bible was actually 
you know, set aside from the people. Yes. It's become so expensive. Why? Because people were not able to get access to the Bible. Mm. It was only kept only for the clergy and leaders within the churches who were in the process, they actually misapply scriptures to make money out of those things and they'll try to, you know, manipulate the scriptures and no one was actually allowed. So superstition, which yeah. began early on, which my brother said, mm. it actually intensifies. So darkness became more and more prominent within the churches and eventually God has to do something about this. So he began also to raise up some few individuals who could also begin to speak about the word of God. So this darkness just came more and more darker and God was not happy about what was happening. So mm. indulgences, the sale of the salvation of man, mm. when you die, your soul goes into a limbo whereby the church now claim to have power to, tra to transfer your, your soul into heaven or to take it to hell. So people begin to pay money out of this. So indulgences was actually one of the one of the tools that I actually used to, to try and make a lot of money out of the word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have shared this about who is behind all this. Mm -hmm. The devil himself. The power behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, we learn a lot about how he works to make people to understand what he wants them to understand. Mm -hmm. As I'll share with you here, it says all the powers of his mastermind were now bent to the work of deception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm to secure the sympathy of the angels that had been under his command. Mm. So now, in everything that the devil has done, the history that we, we are talking about, he's been behind all the things, deceiving the people, making sure that they don't understand fully the word of God. Yeah. So deception was a, a very big part on confusing people, mm. on making sure that the scripture is, is, is not the way it's supposed to. Mm. So mm. a number of things were meant to, to, to be you know, uh, giving a wrong perception mm. in what the scripture says. Sure. Mm. Mm. Jerusalem is destroyed. Mm -hmm. Error has come in. Mm. Now God says, in every age and generation, he has people that he raises yes, to carry the standard of heaven. Amen. Remember the standard of heaven. Let me liken it to the picture that you mm. do. You see when the president of a country is passing by, yeah. there are those small flags that oh. kids carry around. Oh, yes. Those are standards. Mm. Mm. So he raises people to make sure throughout the whole generation the standard of heaven yeah. Yeah. is seen somewhere flying. Sure. Mm. And so throughout the ages, God raises reformers. Yeah. Mm. I'm particularly touched by one reformer. Mm. When, when mm. his life had come to an end, that mm. has, yeah. has says to, to the person who was ready to kill him, he yeah. says, why are you standing behind me? Mm. Boldly come hey, in front of me Kosia. and kindle the fire mm. in front of my face. Mm. If I was not, if I was afraid, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Which is the mm. attitude mm. that we should, we should mm. have. So God raises reformers mm. throughout the generations. And I think what's important to understand about the reformers is, you know, Brother Franco was referring to darkness. He actually made me think of Second Peter chapter 1, which says that, um, verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Yep. Where unto you do well that he take heed mm. as a light, as unto a light <clears throat> that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn mm. and the day star arise in your hearts. Mm. So this prophecy yeah. of scripture arises in the darkness mm. as mm. a light. And this is exactly what was happening with the reformers, that mm. they are raised up because it's a time of darkness and God raises the prophecy, which is scripture, mm. to bring light so that they come out of the darkness. And the day dawns and the day star, which is Christ, arises oh, yeah. in their hearts. Mm. So the intention of bringing a reformation was God bringing his people back into the scriptures mm. to mm. say, this is the way that we are going. You know, people need to give up their lives because, you know, from the darkness, we are in a period where people don't know what truth is. Mm. And God has to raise up the truth. And where is the truth contained? It's contained in the scriptures. You know, if we read, for example, um, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Mm. I'll just go there quickly so that we understand the essence of the scriptures. Second yeah. Timothy chapter three, verse 15 says, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy scriptures, mm. which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Yes. Right? Um, and then it says through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. So the scriptures make you wise, wise. unto salvation, salvation. through yeah. faith in mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Mm. We can only be wise in salvation. We can only experience salvation 
through the scriptures. And this is what the reformers were missing, that they were thinking they're experiencing salvation, but there was something that was not adding up. Why? Because the scriptures which bring salvation were hidden. But then verse 16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, right? And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And then verse 17 says, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto good works. So this is the aim of the scriptures. When God is bringing the scriptures back in the Reformation, I mean, when mm. you look at the reformers, every single thing they had to they had to tear down, or every single doctrine they had to tear down, was actually rooted in the scriptures. Sure. Mm. So in the time of the reformation, God is calling us back into the scriptures to say, this is the only way that man can be perfected. Yeah. Outside of the scriptures, we cannot be perfected. You know, the indulgences that they had to do, they don't bring perfection. Sure. You know, every single penance that they had to do, it lacks that perfection that the scripture is intending to give. And God raises up the people to remind them that it is only in the scriptures that we find life. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, Sister Zuki. Thank you so much, Sister Zuki. So now we have looked at the reformers. Mm. Now, basically, the reformers are crying out to the children of God, mm. get here the truth, prepare for the judgment, mm. prepare for the second coming. Now, in, in the quest of heaven, wanting us to understand mm. how judgment shall, shall work, yes, we sir. have a heavenly sanctuary. Mm. An earthly sanctuary is drawn for the children of Israel mm. so they may understand the services mm. that happen in the earthly sanctuary so that it can show them the, the processes that mm. are happening in the heavenly sanctuary. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I think Hebrews chapter 8, verse, verse 1, it says, now, now of the things which we have spoken... This is the sum. We have such a high priest mm-hmm. who is set on the high, on the right hand of God, on the throne of majesty in heavens. And when you go to chapter nine, uh, chapter ten, verse nine, it says, "Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, mm-hmm. that he may establish the second. So mm-hmm. the context there is actually the sanctuary. So Christ, when he came here on earth, he served. I mean, as a high priest, was actually accomplishing the work of the you know of the of the court." Because the sanctuary was actually divided in three in an apartment. Mm. So the court, the holy place, and the most holy place. So after finishing his work here on cross, on the cross of Calvary, he went into the heavenly sanctuary as a high priest and he took away the first so they can establish the second. Mm. Now, since I think uh, 31 AD, he was serving in the holy place. Okay, and there were prophecies were pointing that at some point in his life, he's going to move from the holy place into the most holy place. Yeah. Mm. So Christ has been moving. So the plan of redemption is actually moving from mm-hmm. the court, the holy place. And then from the holy place, he's supposed to move into the most holy place. Now, this is very interesting. When you go to Daniel chapter 9, it speaks about the 70 weeks. Okay, now the 70 weeks talks about the four, I mean, 400 and some, I mean, 490 mm-hmm. years, which was given specifically for the children of Israel. Yeah. But along with that prophecy is Actually, the prophecy of the 2,300 days and the sanctuary shall be cleansed because it was also part of that. Now, after Christ has saved for that particular moment in the holy place, the time came actually in 1844 that Christ supposed to make a move from the most holy, I mean, from the holy place into the most holy place to begin the work of judgment. Now, mm. in order for him to begin the work of judgment, he was able to build up a movement that was supposed to announce to give an announcement that a Christ has made a move. And mm. that movement was actually the Millerite movement. Mm. M- Millerite movement that was in 1844. So Daniel chapter 9, uh, chapter 9, of course, that would speak about the 70 weeks. Mm. It began actually in 457 BC. And it went all the way until 1844. And 1844, Christ <laughs> made a move into the most holy place. That's where the work of the judgment has just now begun. Mm. And also the work of the judgment or investigative judgment, to be precise, I mean, comes from between Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 8. Mm. So Daniel chapter 7 and 8 chronicle the battle of the little horn. And when we come to the book of Daniel chapter 7, the theme is judgment, mm. but it's end time judgment. Mm. And it's judgment against the little horn in vindication of the children of God. Because if the little horn, which is the power that is exalting itself above the most high, is the oppressor of the children of God, when he is judged, the children of God are set free and they are given dominion to rule under the one who is like the son of man. But now when you come to Daniel chapter 8, we see the cleansing of the sanctuary. 
before you get to the mark of the beast, the Bible speaks about the everlasting gospel. Mm. So verse 6, it says, And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that are dwell upon the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him that made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. So that's the message that is going everywhere. Now, coming after that is actually the warning of the reception of the mark of the beast. So mm. the reason why people are going to receive the mark of the beast is simply because they are going to reject the first angel's message, which actually has the intention of preparing everyone around the world to be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm. Now, when it comes to the mark of the beast, of course, you cannot receive the mark of the beast if you have never had re, uh, worship the image of the beast, mm -hmm. and by worshiping the image of the beast, you're mm -hmm. going to be worshiping the beast, and the one that is behind the beast is actually the devil himself. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone might be asking, who's the beast, and how do I know that I'm not worshiping the beast? Yeah. When you go to Revelation chapter, actually chapter 13, the Bible actually identify a power mm -hmm. that received the power from the devil himself, and this power, we've been going through it, it actually identify the papacy, the Roman Catholic Church system, not individual yeah. Now, this system is the system that eventually actually received the power from the devil and, and is going to establish some, some certain things that, you know, so worship that is talking about there is talking about Sunday worship when it's going to be enforced by the cause of the law. So as we are going toward the end of the world, we are going to be divided into classes. The class of those are going to receive the mark of the beast and those are going to receive the seal of God. Now, the seal of God and the mark of the beast actually in contrast. Mm. So if the mark of the beast is Sunday worship by law, then the seal of God is actually worship of God based upon the fourth commandment, which is going to also to contrast with mm. this first worship in the, in the last days. And I think another thing that we need to note is that when you look at Revelation chapter 13, the first part of God's commandments is under attack. Mm. Because remember, it's a satanic triumvirate. So you've got the dragon, you've got the beast from the sea, you've got the beast from the ground. And these form a satanic trinity. And the first commandment says you shall not have any other God beside me. The second one, God says thou shall not make any image, but they make an image to the beast. Then you see the, the Sabbath commandment. The, the name of the Lord is used in vain and the beast blasphemes the name of the Lord. Then you see the Sabbath commandment under attack with a spurious Sabbath. So you see that the first half of the Ten Commandments is under attack in the book of Revelation, particularly in chapter 13. It's the center of the final crisis, the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Thank you so much, my brothers and sisters. As we conclude this series, yes, we see Jerusalem. Mm. Truth rejected. Judgment coming upon them. We see the rise of reformers. Mm. Particularly, I'm touched by the, the words of, of us. Mm. When he said, said, when you are supposed to see this testimony, he writes a letter to a friend and mm. says, I write this letter in my prison hey, with my fetter hands, hey. expecting Chains. my death tomorrow. Mm. Hey. When with the assistance of Christ... We shall again hey, meet in the delicious peace hey. of the future life. You will learn how merciful hey. God has been towards me mm. in the midst of my trial and tribulations. Yeah. That some applies to the disciples. All of them want trials through tribulations. Mm. Now truly can we appreciate mm. Hebrews chapter 11 hey. verse 18, mm. when it the says, whole fame. all died in yeah. faith, ah. not having received the promises, That's... but having them afar off, yes. and were persuaded of them, hey. and embraced them, hey. and confessed hey. that there were strangers hey. and pilgrims on the earth. Amen. Truly, when we look at this whole controversy, yes. now the angels of God are standing in the gates of the cities, mm. like they did in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Seeing the judgment is now, they are pulling the children of men mm. out into salvation. Mm. Please don't hesitate. Yes. Make a haste. Mm. Yeah. We plead that God may give the angels the very same spirit that they pull us out. Mm. Yeah. As we linger around, may mm. we be pulled out mm. of this sinful world oh, yes. and be prepared for a kingdom that is coming soon. Mm. As if that is not enough. Amen. The time of trouble is upon us. Mm. It is hey. not a stone throw away. Mm. Therefore, this word is coming to us to say, be ye sober, yeah. be ye yes. vigilant, yes. watch your garments, Amen. so that they are clean and you are able to stand before the throne of grace mm. soon and very soon. Yes. He who said it is coming yeah. will shall come. come. You will not tarry. Yeah. The eastern skies shall break forth. Hallelujah. And our Savior shall come. Oh, yes, man. And our redemption is now nearer hey, than we ever yeah. thought. Yeah. Yeah. Up we shall be raised into the skies. Amen. And shall go and stay with 
with our father in eternity. Amen. New Jerusalem will finally be laid on Mount Olivet. Mm. Mm. And darkness shall be forever extinguished. Mm. So truly, he says, behold, I come quickly. Quick. Yeah. And my reward is with me to give everyone yeah. according to their works. Oh, yes. Dear viewers, we thank the Lord. Mm. That you stayed with us throughout this whole series. Yeah. How we pray by the mercies of God. That this light that has been <laughs> shed in your way will not be to waste. Mm. When it is in you and it's like fire, don't sit. Hey. Run. We have been running. Run with us. So that we prepare a people to meet their God. Mm. Shall we bow our heads Amen. in prayer. Mm. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful moment that you have given us to sit as brothers and sisters together with our viewers and deliberate upon, a, upon your way. Now, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that these vessels of clay that have declared your word and the mortals that have listened to, to, the, to it may be engraved in your hand. Mm -hmm. We want you to present us before God so mm. that we have done well and have been purified. Oh, yes. We know, our Father, you are faithful. We will stay and walk the road until that day when we shall come to fetch us, Father. Until then, we pray that you keep us in your keeping care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.